Hello, everyone. Today is Somerset Math Circle Club lecture number three. Today's lecture there are five parts. We'll start with part one: multiples and divisibility. We have covered this last year. Um, here we have a few properties to go through. Number one: that a and b be numbers. We say a is a multiple of b if a equals to b times some integer. For example, if a is number fifteen. And b is five. We would say a is a multiple of b because a is a multiple of three times b, right?、Um, if a and b are second, if a and b are multiples of c, then a plus b is a multiple of c, and then a minus b is also a multiple of c because each one is a multiple of c. Number three, let a be a number and let b be a non-zero number. We say that a is divisible by b if a divided by b is an integer. That says a is a multiple of b. So number four is、um, some a list of rules that we can check whether a number can be divisible by these numbers. First one. Is number two. Any number can be divided by two if they are even, right? Say two, four, eight, and so on. Any number can be divided by three if the sum of this number's digits could be divided by three. We can okay. Let's give an example. Say number one hundred twenty-three. We add all the digits up, which is six, and six can be divided by three. So this whole number one hundred twenty three can be divided by three. So we have in last year's、um, video we have explained how this works. A student can go back to last year's、uh, videos and find out how we can、uh, prove this. Num、uh, part C. So what number can be divided by four if the number formed by the last two digits of the original integer is divisible by four? Then the whole number can be divided by four. For example, we have three thousand four hundred and twenty. If twenty can be divided by four, the whole number can be divided by four. Five. Any number can be divided five it, if its unit digit is a multiple of five or zero. E, any number can be divided by nine if the sum of this number's digits could be divided by nine. This is similar to B. Okay, let's look at some practice problems. Practice problem one: A. What number between one hundred and twenty, one hundred and two hundred, is both a perfect square and a multiple of seven? This problem is relatively easy. The students can just list all the perfect square numbers between one hundred and two hundred. So one hundred is a perfect square itself. This is ten square. Next is eleven square, twelve square, thirteen square, and. Sixteen square, and that's it. So before two hundred, these five are the perfect square numbers, and we can try for each one whether they can be divided by seven. If they can be divided by seven, then that's a multiple of seven, and that would be the answer. So we'll let the students to finish this one. Part B: What is the greatest three-digit number that is a multiple of thirteen? What is the greatest three-digit number? That is nine nine nine. But nine 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 cannot be divided by thirteen, so the students can figure out nine hundred ninety nine divided by thirteen is remainder eleven. So we have to backtrack eleven to find the number that can be divided by thirteen, which is nine hundred eighty eight. So I think this problem. So we we quickly went through this, but the students can figure this out. Practice problem two. This is a long number, one two one two one two, that can be separated into two parts. That's a hundred twenty thousand plus twelve hundred plus twelve. Okay, then we separate these number into two, three parts. How can we use this fact to tell that this number is divisible by three? As we said earlier, so let's go back. To the properties, if a b are multiples of c, then a plus b is a multiple of c, right? So, 
Each term here, we can prove they can be divided by 3 because this number, we add all the digits up, this is 3. So this number can be divided by 3. This number added up is also 3, and this is also 3. So each single term is a multiple of 3 or can be divided by 3. So this whole number can be divided by 3. Practice problem 3. Can you explain if a plus b plus c plus d digit sum is divisible by 9, then four digit number a, b, c, d is divisible by 9? So in this problem, we can rewrite the number a, b, c, d into four terms. The first term, A represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 terms. That's a thousand. So A represents the thousands term, thousands place. And B is the hundreds place. And C is the tens place. And D is the singles place. And now we can separate each single term into two terms. The first one, we can write this as 999A plus A, right, that you add them up, it's still going back to 1000A. The second term is 99B plus B. So still you get 100B. And the third term is 9C plus C and then plus D. So we collect all the terms that can be divided by 9. First term, third term, and the fifth term. So 999A plus 99B plus 9C. We know this can be divided by 9 because all the front, the coefficients can be divided by 9. The remainder is A, B, C, and D. So this can be divided by 9. If the sum of these four numbers can be divided by 9, then the whole number can be divided by 9. Practice problem 4. If DE is divisible by 4, will 5-digit number A, B, C, D, E be divisible by 4? And why? Okay, so for this problem, we can do the same. Um, well, we need this one can be divided by 4. And we can separate the first three terms. So A, B, C, D, E equals to A represents the 10,000 um, place. So 10,000 A. B represents the thousands place. And C is the hundreds place. And then D, E. Okay? D, E can be divided by 4. This 100 can be divided by 4, which is 25. And this, of, uh, of course, can be divided by 4. And this first term, you have the 10,000 in front, that can also be divided by 4. So therefore, the whole number can be divided by 4.